My dear friends, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Perhaps the best known biblical verse in the entire Bible. And the heart of the intercession and intervention that Jesus had on our behalf. And that is what God had in mind when he sent his son into the world. That through the sacramental life of the church, we may come to know Jesus and embrace him as the Son of God and the promised Savior of the world. We come here tonight to celebrate the past 75 years of being able to hear God's word and be fed by the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. The people of the Old Testament were complaining to Moses about the wretched food and the lack of water. Jesus came to give us the bread of life to eat and the living water that would cause us never to be thirsty again. We have come to understand the importance of church. And so we celebrate today our church, named after the Apostle Matthew. St. Matthew Parish was established in 1944, 75 years ago. The small country parish grew exponentially as the city of Statesboro grew. It was the Glen Mary Home Missioners who established St. Matthew Mission in Statesboro on October 22, 1944. Mass was celebrated in a small home on South Main Street. Plays were performed and May crownings took place at the Strozo Farm. The farm of Miss Molly near Rocky Ford played host to religious camps put on by the Glen Mary sisters. Children came from seven counties, poor children, farm children, town children, and even Protestant children crossed the rickety old wooden bridge over the Ogeechee River, a bridge with no side rails, to stay in Miss Molly's farm and her rundown home with her slanting floors, her newspaper lined walls, and a leaning outhouse. A spirit of adventure and a can-do faith defined the early Catholic presence in this area. Land was purchased in 1947 at the intersection of Highway 80 and Savannah Avenue to build a permanent church. Mr. Anton Kulis from the Ukraine made the maple benches, the side altars, and a cedar communion rail for the new church, saving the poor parish a great deal of money. Father Ed Smith and Father Nagel poured, rather carved, the, the Stations of the Cross. The Rockwell Company of Pittsburgh moved to Statesboro and doubled the Catholic population. Ministry to the students at Georgia Southern grew during this time. 
The first parish council meeting took place on June 14th, 1966, and the mission became a diocesan parish in 1967. The little Spanish Gothic church quickly grew and outgrew its facility and land. Sunday masses were, were filled to overflowing with people finding seats on the stairs leading up to the balcony. St. Matthew's Parish needed to find a new home. Honey Brown, who was not a Catholic, gave the parishioners a great price on 12.8 acres off Gentilly Road. Without a firm plan or financing, the parishioners took a leap of faith and they purchased the land. Georgia's, Georgia Southern's growth increased the number of parishioners during the 1980s and plans to add a new church next to the multi-purpose church were undertaken under the leadership of Father Mike Smith. The present church was dedicated in 1996 by Bishop Bolin. A Spanish mass was added on Saturday evenings. Father Tim uh, McEwen oversaw the addition of a new cry room and the expansion of the church narthex. The first four person focused missionary team arrived in the fall of 2010 to begin a new era of campus ministry to Georgia Southern. An active CCW and the Knights of Columbus Council continued to thrive. Ministries have grown and St. Matthew's reputation as a welcoming, warm parish home was firmly established. Parishioners Robert Girardo and Father Brett Brannon were ordained priests for the Diocese of Savannah. The social hall was renovated and dedicated under Father Brett Brannon in September of 2012 in memory of Father Girardo, who died suddenly on March the 5th, 2011. Since its beginning, the Catholic community in Statesboro has worked in partnership with other local churches to serve those in need. Father Mike Smith, who was pastor from 1988 to 1997, began a tithing practice of having the parish donate 10% of the offertory to local charities. This is certainly a momentous occasion. I am happy that so many parishioners of St. Matthew are here to celebrate this significant anniversary. Think of how many prayers have been said in this church by the members of St. Matthew and others who have visited here to say a prayer over the last 75 years. How many babies were baptized into the community of faith these past 75 years? How many people have come here to seek the Lord's abundant mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation? How many couples have come here and vowed to each other a life of love and fidelity? How many were brought here for the last time at the end of their earthly life to receive the prayers and the blessings of the church before burial? You are active members of St. Matthew Church because you care. By being a volunteer, you make a big difference in the lives of the people you serve, and I believe that you know that. But what you may not realize is that you also improve your overall physical and mental health 
and have greater life satisfaction when you volunteer your time and your talent and your treasure to the parish's good works. Serving in your faith community helps you gain a sense of purpose and accomplishment in your own life. By saying yes to your St. Matthew community, you are saying yes to being a disciple and following Jesus' footsteps. A Christian community does not just happen. A parish community is truly a church when people begin to see each other as members of the body of Christ and embrace the mission of the Catholic Church and long to participate in the sacramental life of the church. A Catholic parish is not a social club or an organization that just does good works. The Rotary Club or the VFW are great service organizations, but they are not church. That is what you are. You are church, a faith community of the Roman Catholic tradition. And you have been that for the past 75 years. And that is what Jesus Christ founded on the night before he died. He founded a church. He founded a church where people care about each other, where they pray for each other and with each other. He founded a church in which people take seriously Jesus' command to wash each other's feet. There is an enormous power in the gathering of friends, but there is an even greater power from the Holy Spirit when we gather as a Eucharistic community. The blessings are endless. What began 75 years ago was a gift that has been given and shared for generations. And we are to respect and be grateful for this gift. We are to cultivate it and nurture it and hand it on to the next generation so that they might grow and enjoy the sacramental grace from which so many have benefited these past 75 years. We are grateful to God for sending us 19 pastors over the past 75 years, many of whom are here today. This celebration gives us an opportunity to thank our most recently retired pastor, Father Doug Clark, and welcome our new pastor, Father John Johnson. St. Matthew Church and Parish Community, happy 75th birthday. Amen.